Welcome. Welcome to our exclusive channel. We just found this article by chance online in the public domain, public access, and it reads A Kung Fu Jew, even people who knew his story or know his story think of him as Chinese. And this is in regards to legendary late great martial artist Bruce Lee. Mixed martial artist uncovering Bruce Lee's hidden Jewish ancestry in a book by a scholar Matthew Polly. Research shows the American born action film star was a polygot with diverse ethnic backgrounds. Did martial arts legend Bruce Lee have Jewish blood? We always thought they just said German Chinese from his mother. Although he died 45 years ago at the young age of 32, Lee remained among the world's most famous martial arts masters. His punches, kicks and fighting prowess are instantly recognisable in his hit movies such as Enter the Dragon. Yet one aspect of his background remains obscure. Evidence indicates he had a Jewish great-grandfather. Lee's Jewish lineage is among the revelations in a new book, or in a book, because it's been out for a while. Bruce Lee, A Life by author Matthew Polly, a martial artist himself. Polly seeks to go beyond the many myths surrounding Bruce Lee and present a more nuanced portrait of the famed fighter and movie star. He states, Bruce, for me, is a diverse and interesting person who is not generally thought of in that area, Polly said. Even people who know his story think of him as Chinese. He was a polygot from lots of different ethnic backgrounds. That he was part Jewish indicates how diverse an individual he was. Lee bridged east and west, creating a hybrid fighting style called Chi Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist, and transforming Asian martial arts from a small-scale interest in the US into a nationwide surge. Since Lee's films were released there, there have been over 20 million martial arts students in the West. One of them is Polly, Matthew Polly, who calls Lee an inspiration. He has trained in various disciplines across the world, studying with the famed Shaolin monks in China to learning the more contemporary mixed martial arts, or double MA. MMA. Polly describes these experiences in his first two books. His third and most recent work, though, combines journalism with scholarship. In addition to interviewing surviving members of Lee's family, including his widow Linda, now Linda Lee Emery, and their daughter Shannon, the couple's son Brandon, a star in his own right, tragically died while filming the movie The Crow in 1993. Matthew Polly also conducted research that contradicts the established versions of Lee's life. Buried Roots In the book's footnotes, Polly refers to incorrect statements that lead to assumptions that Lee's maternal great-grandfather was German Catholic. Polly found evidence that this great-grandfather Moses Hartog Bosman came from a Dutch-Jewish family of German descent. Bosman was born in Rotterdam in 1839 to teenage parents Hartog Moses Bosman and Anna de Vries. His father was a kosher Jew butcher. Moses did not want to take up his father's business policy. When he was a teenager, Bosman joined the Dutch East Asia Company and jumped on a boat halfway across the world, ending up in Hong Kong. He was one of those boys who wanted the adventure, Polly said. He could very easily have died at any moment on the journey. Instead, in 1866, he became the Dutch consul to Hong Kong, where he left a complicated legacy. He brought a Chinese concubine named Zetai, or Zetai and had six children with him, all grew up to become extremely wealthy, the richest in Hong Kong, Polly said. One of their sons, Ho Kong Dong, had a wife, 13 concubines and a British mistress. With his mistress, he had his 30th child, a daughter, Grace Ho, who became Bruce Lee's mother. By this time, Boss Man was gone. He had involved himself in what was called the coolie trade, in which he and other Hong Kong merchants signed Chinese laborers to exploitative contracts to work in the US building railroads, Polly said. But Boss Man went bankrupt and abandoned his family for California, changing his name to Charles Henry Morris Boss Man. He would not see his sons again, Polly said. Bossman started a separate family after marrying the daughter of a wealthy businessman involved in the China trade. They moved to England where he was buried in a Christian cemetery. He have, may have converted later in life, Polly speculated. Polly thinks the story of the Dutch Jew could have made a good movie, but there is another plot twist. Sun dealt with a Bruce Lee's grandfather, Ho Kom Dong, was actually Bossman's biological son. Of Bossman's six Chinese children, Polly said all of them looked different. 
with Ho Gom Dong's features the most Chinese of all sons. There are rumours that maybe the concubine had an affair with the Chinese man on the side, that Moses was the official father but not the biological father. Policy. If that's true, there was there's no Jewish blood lineage. But Polly said there is no evidence to back up the rumoured affair. Eurasian children often look different from their siblings. Bruce looked far more Chinese than his brothers Robert and Peter. One of these is Agnes. I'm not too sure if it said that one of them was adopted, I'm not really sure. Polly also questioned whether or not a Chinese concubine in 1860s Hong Kong married to a European trader would dare to cheat. And he noted Hong Kong Dong officially told everyone Moses Hatok was his father on his identity card. In Polly's view, Moses Hatok Bosman was the father of Ho Kong Dong, said Polly. The story of Bruce Lee's Jewish genealogy has resulted in a video made by educational producer Bim Bam. There it is there. Watch it on YouTube. Watch it here. I love it, Polly said. It's spot on. It balances the line between treating the subject light-heartedly while allowing for this fascinating story that no one has ever heard about. Moses Hartog's life story that led to Bruce Lee, the greatest Chinese Kung Fu martial artist of all time. A star is born. And it goes on about his common birth story. All right. When Lee began teaching martial arts in the US, his first student, Jesse Glover, was African-American. At the time, the Chinese community and the African-American community were at odds. Polly said, Bruce did not care about race and ethnicity as long as you were sincere. His first class was the most diverse group of students in the history of Kung Fu. Lee also found acceptance when he married his college sweetheart, Linda Emery. Then Linda Lee. Ah, yeah, Linda Emery. Now Linda Lee Emery. Whose background... What was it? No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she went back to her maiden name, Linda Lee Emery. Okay, forget that one. His background includes Swedish and German roots. According to the book, Lee proudly told everyone about his newborn son Brandon's diverse features, describing him as perhaps the only Chinese person with blonde hair and grey eyes. Breaking the celluloid ceiling. One place where Lee struggled for inclusion was Hollywood. Even after his initial success as martial arts master Kato in the TV show The Green Hornet, no one had ever seen an Asian martial art masters, martial arts master on a Western TV show policy. After its cancellation, Lee dedicated himself to becoming a martial arts movie star, playing a heroic role over and over again. Policy. Hollywood did not think audiences would accept it. Finally, Lee went back to Hong Kong, where he portrayed a martial arts master in the films The Big Boss for Safari and Way of the Dragon. They became the biggest box office sensations Southeast Asia had ever seen, policy. This led to Into the Dragon, a precedent setting co production between Hong Kong and Hollywood. It was the world's first ever English language Kung Fu movie. Produced on a $1 million budget, the film made $90 million at the box office. Polly goes on to state he was stunned anybody could fight like that. He seemed superhuman. Yet when the film was released on July 26, 1973, it would come amid tragedy. Bruce Lee had died six days earlier in what Polly describes as mysterious circumstances. Writing the book, he knew he had to say something about it, Polly said. In this book, he presents a new theory for his death, Bruce Lee's death. He died from heat stroke. Lee was buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle, in which had two sections, a very tiny Chinese section and a bigger one for Caucasians, Polly said. They asked if he wanted to be buried with his people. He chose to be buried in the white section of the cemetery. At his funeral, former student Glover stayed by his grave and shooed off the workmen who were filling it in shoveling in the final piece of earth himself. Imagine an African-American man filling in a Chinese grave in a white cemetery in Seattle, Polly said. It's a quintessentially American experience. Quintessentially American experience. There's some comments here. It's a very interesting article. We never had an idea that Bruce Lee was Jewish. Wow. Nothing wrong with that. So maybe he had Jewish, German, Chinese blood to his mother. There is a scene from Way of the Dragon, or Return of the Dragon, fighting Chuck Norris, and this movie apparently made him very famous. 
Okay, so if you enjoyed this particular video, then you know what to do. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Add your comments below the video. And we promise you we will get back to them as soon as possible. We will reply to you. And then go share this particular video with all your friends, family, neighbours, strangers and others. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, our latest video upload to our exclusive channel.